what happens if you're doing a painting looking out of a window but you want to have lots of colour in your painting? Well, you don't want it to be just about tone. Well, technically, you shouldn't be able to do it because if you look out of a window, you get lots of tone. And we looked at Ken Howard and you know, his beautiful tonal paintings. And then we looked at the St Ives School and, and we looked at Christopher Wood's painting out of a window, which was largely about colour and shape. So how do you do both? Well, if we think about Bonnard, you can see very clearly what he did. And I'll just hold up my book because the wonderful thing about this book is it's got both his painting here and his drawing here. Now, Bonnard, uh, which is quite a surprise to people, painted from his drawings, not from life. So when we look at this drawing, you can see how it would um, appear to the eye tonally. So you've got quite a lot of contre jour against the light. And you've got these sort of dark spots of tone here. Now, if you were Ken Howard and you were doing a painting from that, it would be tonal, it wouldn't be about colour. But look what Bonnard does with it. He fills the room with this extraordinary orange and greens. And, and the only sort of suggestion of tone is, is creeping down here. But it actually works tonally as well. So you've got all the colour that you would get just looking around the room. And you've still got the tone. And here you can see, here he's got the white spots which give you the feeling of the, the light hitting the oranges here against the dark. But the dark isn't, it isn't brown, it's, it's the most wonderful rich oranges and greens. This little bit of blue, this triangle, is very important because it makes the oranges glow more because it's an opposite colour, but also because it's so dark against the light here, it makes the lights look lighter, so it does two jobs. He's made a sort of composite. He's, he's able to complete the picture with his imagination from the drawing. Looking at another example, it's very similar actually, but you can see, I think, even more clearly, and he's got a structure in the painting that could only really be done when you were away from the subject. Again, you see his use of violets, actually on the doorway there, and yellows, so that he, he has the best of both worlds. He, he can use colour and tone. Um, and, and actually, again, if you were to squint at this, you can see that it works tonally, that you do get the sense that the, that the lightest thing is the sky outside, and that the darkest thing is, is you know, this, this section here against the light. And yet there's, there's so much colour inside. He can only have the, all this colour and tone because he's not in front of the subject. Looking at this painting, The Open Window by Bonnard, you can see how he takes it one step further. He has the north coast and the south coast in this painting because he's got shapes, I mean very clearly defined shapes here, and the black shape and the orange shape, and he has colour. And he has tone. He has everything in this picture. He's managed to somehow combine them all to make this incredible sort of heat in the room. You could take this painting to a sort of logical conclusion, as Dufy did here. And it's rather nice because you'll see that there's a running theme, which is the stripes. And he uses, just as Bonnard does, the contrasting stripes inside and the warm orangey floor here and the, the blues outside. But the difference is that Dufy's painting is actually even less about tone and more starts to become more about pattern and more about colour and shape, but actually increasingly about pattern. Looking at the Anne Redpath next to these two, you can see how she takes it more in the direction of tone. There is actually a very strong pattern there. And again, she uses the stripes. Look, she uses violet and yellow, violet and yellow, just as Bonnard does. But there is, if you squint at that one, much more a sort of layering of tone. But she manages to keep both tone, shape and colour. I'm going to put up another painting next to the Anne Redpath, and that's by Christopher Wood. And again, it's got stripes in it, but this one is completely not about tone. There's hardly any tonal contrast between the inside and the outside. And I think that's a lot to do with his friendship with Winifred Nicholson, because 
she was of the belief that if you got rid of form and form has shadows I mean actually there is a shadow here on the figure but the figure has very little form the, the bed has very little form the room has very little form it's it's largely about these wonderful colors this these pinks set against this pale green and this sort of um, dreamy blue outside so I'll show you an example now of a Winifred Nicholson window next to the Christopher Wood and here you can see there's hardly any difference tonally between the inside and the outside. There's hardly any suggestion of form. So, I mean, the table is a vague dark line there, but everything else is sort of appears to be floating. Um, and the, the most important thing really in this painting is, is this incredible lime green that's, that's sort of talking to the, um, the fields outside. And this little bit of pink, which sets off the whole picture. Without that, it sort of loses its, its pizzazz. Winifred Nicholson said she liberated colour by getting rid of form. Well, I think that Matisse did a similar thing, but by using pattern. And he was able to have all the colour he needed inside while still looking outside. So I'll show you a, an example. And actually, I'll put it next to the doofy that we looked at earlier. You can see how... Um, there's similarities here. Look at the use of pattern. I mean, you've got this, the pattern, this pattern, the pattern on her clothes, the pattern of the railings, the pattern of the clouds. Uh, the only sort of um, sense of form, well, there isn't any sense of form through shadow. There's no shadows here at all. Uh, actually, the same is true with the Dufy. There's, there's no shadows here. This is, again, about, you see, you've got the railings here and you've got the stripes, you've got the curly chairs and the pattern of the, the Madonna lilies against the blue and the pattern outside of the little dots here. So the, he, they both managed to incorporate colour inside by, by actually making the window part of the pattern so that you don't think about whether it's, oh, this is inside, this is outside. You, you read it inside because of the scale of the things um, but they're woven together through the pattern. If you were to stand where Matisse stood and look at the model against the, the window, what you'd see is this would all be much, much darker. Outside would be so bright that uh, it would throw this into shadow. And just to show you um, how it would look um, probably in reality, I will show you a Dutch school painting. So here we have, and it's rather nice because it goes well with the Matisse. This is probably more the scene that you would see in terms of tones. So you can see all this is very, very much in shadow, isn't it? And there is actually a lot of pattern in this one, as there is with the Matisse. The difference is, look at the shadow. This is very dark. Look how dark it is here. Look, this is black against the light, and you've got this white, white light outside in comparison to the dark inside. So if we contrast um, the Ken Howard that I looked at earlier here, uh, I'll put that down there, with the Diebenkorn. It's rather nice, this link, because you've got um, here on the, the light falling on the model's hair in the Ken Howard and the light falling on the model's hair here in the Diebenkorn. But look how Diebenkorn uses pattern. So he's got this stripes again. He's got the sort of pattern there. This, this becomes pattern. This becomes pattern. Um, even her face actually becomes pattern there. Look, it's almost like a, a, a rectangle there. And then a larger rectangle. And he gets rid of the sense of form. I mean, you can maybe sort of hold the model's head, but the, the shape of the figure is actually quite flat. He really has learnt from Bono. He's learnt um, from Matisse. And, and the result is that, that you get this very deep, rich, quite dark, actually, room. But it's not dark without colour, it's dark with colour. Whereas the Ken Howard is beautiful tonal, but it's not really got the richness of colour. I would hazard a guess that Diebenkorn's studio in California faced 
northeast. I would say it definitely didn't face south. I mean, I, I don't have any idea, but judging by um, the color saturation, that would be my guess.